as he brings us the UFO report coming on in. He's having a little cookies and milk preparing for Santa Claus, making sure all everything is tested on out before the big guy rides in a couple of weeks here. Fedora John, welcome back. Hey, man. More people implemented QA into their lives. The whole world would run a lot smoother. I had How you doing, first, Dave? I had my first glass of milk today in months. months. Oh, you quit milk too? Why? I can't Just, stand milk. Never. Oh, liked okay. Milk. Well, but then it's not. No, yeah. Okay. But then you're fine. But you're fine. Today I was actually craving a glass of cold milk. So I oh. had one. Yeah. How was it? Actually, it was pretty good. Well, was you know what, good. Dave? Hats off to you for actually listening to your body and mm-hmm. actually listen to your body against your normal judgment, right? Normally yeah. you don't like milk, right? And so you, you oh, trusted yeah. your body and you went for it and, and your body rewarded you by, by, by actually tricking you into enjoying it. So it was a win-win for everybody. Well, that is a win-win. And, and by the way, John, six out of the next eight days, I get snow. Six out of the next eight. At that's your house a, where you yeah, live? That, yeah. That's, that's that white stuff that accumulates. Why do cold. people build homes where snow goes? Like, I don't like, I don't, I don't get it, man. I don't like, I, I, I really don't like, I get visiting snow. I love to visit snow. I go to Tahoe. I snowboard. I love, I proposed to my wife on heavenly. I love snowboarding. I love the snow. I do not want it anywhere near my house, man. I'm surprised. Uh, I'm surprised you're still alive. I'm, I really am. Uh, by the way, thank you race fan for the weather update outside SOR headquarters, 31 degrees Fahrenheit. That's minus one Celsius. And with the wind chill factor down to minus 19 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about uh, minus 10 Celsius. So, yeah, it's not too bad. That's that's hoodie weather. I'm having to wear hoodie and socks now, John. Well, that's my problem is I don't like wearing jackets. I, I, I prefer to be in my bands jeans a t-shirt maybe like a sports coat at, at most like that's like the, the length of what i ever want to wear and and so if any viol- if any weather violates that that clothing ritual then i then i get upset speaking of vans i haven't had a pair of vans since i was a teenager i never knew this until i was watching tiktok vans if you throw them will always land right side up yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I have to admit, I didn't actually know that for sure, but um, it was funny because I was just looking at something else about my vans the other day, and I was thinking about the same thing. I was thinking about how bottom heavy they are, and like how there's so much rubber in the bottom, and there's nothing on the top, and so they will, they'll always land and slow down. Yeah. yeah Hopefully, I, when you're in them too. So I, I never ever knew that. All right, let's get to it. Stanford professor Dr. Gary Nolan, who's been working with Jacques Vallee quite a bit over the last number of years on ufos he's been checking into these uh crash retrievals john what do you got yes. for us? well this this is a the, first off uh, you know i want to uh, hats off to to vice and um and um um this individual um uh and if i'm mispronouncing thoby uh uh your name i apologize but thoby champion uh, a champion um this is a really really good article that i recommend everyone read and what it does um including uh, showing a little video is uh, it does it sits down and, and has this really nice lengthy conversation with Dr. Gary Nolan of Stanford about uh, a whole bunch of his research, and um, it, it they go into the crash retrieval material type stuff, but more importantly, what they talk about is uh, looking at the biological impact uh, of uh, people that have um, had contact, as well as the um, the biological uh, impact or the biological signs that might exist for people that have contact and this is actually a very very detailed i was really quite impressed with the length and detail of this article and the number of um of diagrams and so forth that that you're given throughout this article including by the way and this makes the whole article so worth it a very old a very cool picture of the invisible college that i'm not sure i've ever seen before um, that doesn't mean anything. There's probably a lot of pictures I haven't seen before, but just I thought it was neat because I haven't seen it before. And um, and essentially, but what it does is it, it goes down and, it, and it, it gives a lot more specifics than than I would expect. For example, it specifically talks about these um, this connective region that we all have uh, between our hemispheres. And it talks about that if you assume that the average person has a density of, say, one X, 
that most of the people in the study were found to have densities between 5x and 10x, and in some cases up to 15x more density of, of interconnect fibers than the average person. That's beyond, st st you know, statistically significant, right? I mean, 15x is, is a, is a, that's insane, right? That, that is a, that is a magnificent data point if, if once it gets, uh, you know, peer reviewed and so forth. And, um, and, and so, you know, once again, they're only looking at, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, small numbers of patients, um, you know, and, and like I said, I'm, I, you know, I don't have time to go into all the specifics of the article, but, um, you know, it, it's really, it's really good. It's, it's, um, it's, it's really well written and it covers a lot of, a lot of different material. And, uh, like I said, it gives some great, um, diagrams and pictures and so forth. And, and I think paints a really good picture of, of, you know, uh, what I think what it really does is it, it shows it in a beautifully tight, clean way what a beautiful value Dr. Gary Nolan is to this community. Uh, Jonathan Davies quickly asking here, why did, do you think Gary Nolan did not mention astronauts and the effects on the brain? Uh, my guess is because of the fact that he has absolutely zero data. You know, my that, that would be my that would be my guess is that he he probably just doesn't feel comfortable speaking about something that he probably mo well most likely has absolutely no data on whatsoever. Um, because I I don't know like I don't even know if we've ever I don't know if, I don't I don't know if we have any actually I should check we come and think we might we might I don't know if we have one, many autopsy brains of former um, uh, astronauts. But um, but it's a good question, and and, um, and you know it's something we should you know uh, honest, honestly, man, one of us should ask uh, Gary on on Twitter because he usually responds to both of us, and and uh, and, uh, and he might answer the question. So we should find out. All right. Do you think that with these crash retrievals of people who have had close encounter interaction with craft, do you think it's really affecting the body, the mind, the nervous system? Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, look, look, I mean, fields are fields, right? I mean, like people don't understand it. Like people really don't get it. Like fields are everywhere. Fields are, are, are permeating through your body all the time, all sorts of different fields, right? And most of them, most of them are completely harmless. Some of them are helpful, but there are fields that are very unhelpful. And for us to assume that a, um, a propulsion or a an a energy uh, an energy system, or a shielding system, or uh, you pick it, <laughs> you pick any energy system on a craft from the you know was designed off world, and for you to assume that it's not going to generate fields that are harmful to our tissue is insane, right? That's just I mean statistically it's going to happen right um and so you know and i also think that it's very very interesting some of the research that that's been done recently looking at um you know looking at blue shift and red shift and looking to see you know what sort of energy um might end up shifting into a harmful range because of things like time dilation and so forth and and could it be that some of these ships um were not harmful when they left where they came from, but they can't, when they arrived here, they became harmful. Um, and so that's something else that needs to be looked into. Is radiation playing a major factor on this? Oh yeah. Sorry. When I say fields, that's what I mean. Radiation. Yeah. Okay. No, I mean, it, it's, it, yeah. It, it, and it's hard to say whether it is, is it specifically um, the, the spectrum that we consider to be radiation uh, and the classic sense of radiation that I don't know. I mean, it definitely looks like there are definite signs that there are ranges that are being peaked in that in, in that range. But what I'm saying is that there could also be many other fields that we don't have any way of measuring that are doing just as much, if not more harm. And we just don't know because we don't know what to look for. Right. And so to me, basically, in, unless, you know, unless unless the occupant of a vehicle has looked at our physiology and certified like in writing that like his vehicle won't harm us in any way, shape or form. We have to expect that some of them are going to. All right, let's move on to the next topic. 
for the night update on what's going on in Washington with the Gillibrand Amendment. Yeah, so this is just uh, this is just fun. You know, I, I I I really hope that everyone else is enjoying this as much as I am because uh, you know, especially right now, you know, if you look around today, there were so many people writing on this. Um, uh, um, uh, Lido uh, on 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 um, on um, uh, YouTube did a great forty-five minute um, um, uh, presentation on it. A bunch of other people did presentations on it. A uh, bunch of people are talking about. It. So you can pick your flavor. You can pick your favorite voice to listen to the analysis on it. Um, you know there are some concerns that have been raised about some of the possible language changes. You know, you know, is it going to? Um, you know, is it really going to be in the in the Secretary of Defense? Could it end up getting moved down to the back back down to the office of the under? Secretary of Defense, you know, I, I guess that's a possibility. Um, you know, the science advisors um, did look like it possibly got removed. Uh, I did hear today that, that it doesn't look like that the Senate will is likely to sign it before Christmas. Um, so um, it, it we might not hear anything for a little while. Um, but uh, however, you know, myself, um, uh, uh, several other people um, are, are all, you know, have all had you know reasonable data points brought to us that show that essentially assuming that the senate signs it as they're expected to that there's there's absolutely no reason to believe that the president won't sign it and so at this point something has to go terribly wrong for this not to go through and i hope it does go through i think it is necessary you know i i have concerns which i said in the previous dave 101 that we did in regards to how much access will the public have. Now, Science Bob tends to believe that we're going to get it all. I don't believe that for a second. I well, think that I, is extremely wishful thinking. Well, I mean, I in the end, in the end, we will. And eventually, we will get it all. The the the, the challenge is, is going to be the, the metered way in which it's given out to us. Um, uh, you know, uh, you know, 50 years from now, you know, people will know an insane amount about what's going on right now, a lot more than we do now. Um, but you know, but the thing is that there's so many good things in this. I mean, the very fact that there is specific language in this amendment that calls for funding to be allocated for the reverse engineering of recovered materials it's right there in writing like this that to me like i want to get a freaking t-shirt like 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 all all of our lives we've all been hoping praying wishing that there was some agency within the u.s government that was actually reverse engineering ufos and now maybe there was maybe there wasn't i don't care at the moment what i care about is we're getting one and it's official and it's going to be funded and it's going to be real and people are going to be able to apply for jobs there and they're going to produce stuff. Like how amazing is that? It's like X-Files coming to life. Do you believe though that we're going to get everything that they say? Well, the thing is, is it is yes, I do because of the fact that, that in United States, what, what a lot of people fail to recognize is that the, the, the purpose of the United States government is to facilitate interstate commerce, right? <laughs> That's really what it's there for. And, and the thing is, is that a lot of these technologies it, it can be introduced to the U.S. market exclusively, okay? And that gives the U.S. market insane advantage over other, other countries, and so it does get released. This stuff gets released all the time. It gets released very slowly. It, get, it doesn't get released as fast as we wish it would. And it gets released very carefully. And yes, yeah, certainly there are some things that are, are on the dangerous side that don't ever get released. But I mean, you know, I mean, think about it. I mean, look, there is, there is significant evidence, okay? It's not guaranteed, but there is significant evidence that, that titanium came as a result of, of research derived from recovered material. Think about what titanium has done for this planet. I mean, my wedding band's titanium. I, I love it. The thing is, what is a, light as a feather, right? I mean, titanium is a, is a huge, huge thing for, this, for, the, for humanity. And it's very likely that that was derived at least at some level from, from recovered material. That's amazing to me. And I think there's a lot more stuff like that we're just not aware of. All right, Fedora John, 